All right, going to show you Anderson deceiving his audience and lying to them about Numbers 12 and trying to twist Numbers 12 to teach that the sin of interracial marriage is okay. And that, well, Moses, he married an Ethiopian, so it must be okay. And then he'll, you know, typical of all these pro-interracial professing Christians is they always like to rip scripture. They'll try to take obscure examples and try to use the exception to overthrow the rule. And they try to use Numbers 12 as he, while well, Moses interracial married, and when Aaron and Miriam rebuked that, they got in trouble for rebuking it. Okay, uh, let's see Anderson espousing the same uh, heretical argument. This is a great example right here where we have Moses marrying an Ethiopian woman. And when, Mary, uh, when Moses marries this Ethiopian woman, his brother and sister are very angry at him. Now, obviously, an Ethiopian is a very black person, and Moses is an Israelite, and he was often mistaken for an Egyptian. So we could figure that if Moses was mistaken for an Egyptian, by the way, Joseph was mistaken for an Egyptian, and even the Apostle Paul in the New Testament was mistaken for an Egyptian, you know, we can figure that probably the Israelites in Bible times probably looked similar to Egyptians. So basically, they're, they're, they're brown people. If you look at all the Egyptian artwork and everything, you can tell that they're, they're not black, but they're not white either. They're basically brown. And you'd look at that and maybe get an idea of the type of look that, that Moses had. But for whatever reason, uh, Aaron and Miriam are angry at Moses because he's married an Ethiopian woman. And that makes them angry, and they start to speak against Moses, and then basically God judges them. Now, there's nothing in this chapter that rebukes Moses for what he's done or corrects Moses for what he's done. So he keeps saying, oh, well, God never condemned Moses. Moses was never wrong to do that. God never condemned it, you know? He doesn't actually point out a few interesting key points about Numbers 12 to his uh, cultic viewers and deceived listeners. Okay, here he is saying the similar thing about, oh, Numbers 12, it proves that interracial marriage is okay. Watch this. And so the point is, you know, Moses married a really black woman, is my point here. Now, I've heard these racist people try to kind of just, just jump through all these mental hoops to try to say that he didn't really marry a black woman. Like, well, she was just from Ethiopia, but, she, she, you know, she wasn't really Ethiopian. She just kind of lived there. She was just a white person living in Ethiopia. It's like, come on. But these are the same people that will tell you, well, Simon the Canaanite, he's not really Canaanite either. <laughs> Folks, if she wasn't black, why is his family so mad? Right. They're obviously mad about something. Something's making them upset. Something offended them. They're, they're clearly offended. The Bible says she's Ethiopian. His family's getting offended. You know, why not just take the text for what it says? And you don't see God condemning Moses here. You see God condemning Aaron and Miriam. It seems that Anderson may have missed a few points about Numbers chapter 12. Let's go over what he may have overlooked, maybe per possibly purposely, because Anderson is deceiving his audience. He changes scripture. He twists scripture, so he, pur he probably purposely overlooked this to deceive his people. Um, why were Miriam and Aaron punished, okay? Miriam and Aaron rebuked Moses for interracially marrying because they knew it was a sin and they wanted to get dirt on Moses. That was why they rebuked him. And that is why God punished Miriam and Aaron, because they wanted to usurp Moses' authority, okay? They knew interracial marriage was a sin, they knew Moses was wrong for doing so. So they want to get dirt on him to try to get, take over his authority and usurp it. That's why they are punished. Okay, turn to Numbers chapter 12, verses beginning in verse 1 down to verse 9. That's what's going on in Numbers 12. It's about them trying to usurp his authority. Nothing about, oh, it must have been okay for Moses to interracially marry. Numbers chapter 12, verses 1 to 9. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, Hath God indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not also spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam, Come out ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud, and stood in the door of the tabernacle, and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. And he said, sorry, and he said, Hear now my words, if there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision, and will speak unto him in a dream. Now my servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. With him I will speak. 
with him while I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently and not in dark speeches, and the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore then uh, were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? The, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against them when he departed, and he departed. What's going on here? They were trying to usurp his authority. Okay, Moses was wrong for interracially marrying, but they wanted to find dirt on him to try to take over his authority and usurp it. That's why God punished them. And some proof on that is the fact that scripture condemns interracial marriage. Turn to Ezra chapter 10, verses 10 to 17. These are some scriptures that Anderson would not show his people. And Ezra the priest stood up and said unto them, Ye have transgressed and have taken strange wives to increase the trespass of Israel. Now therefore make confession unto the Lord God of your fathers, and do his pleasure, separ and separate yourselves from the people of the land and from the strange wives. And then all the congregation answered and said with a loud voice, As thou hast said, so must we do. But the people are many, and it is time, and it is a time of much rain, and we are not able to stand without, neither is this a work of one day or two, for we are many that have transgressed in this thing. Let now our rulers of all the congregation stand, and let all them which have taken strange wives in our cities come at appointed times, and with them the elders of every city, and the judges thereof, until the fierce wrath of our God for this matter be turned from us. Only Jonathan, the son of Ashel, and Jezeiah, the son of Tikvah, were employed about this matter, and Mashalem and Sabathai, hope I'm saying these names right, and Levite, the, sorry, the Levite helped them, and the children of the captivity also, and Ezra the priest, with certain chief of the fathers, after the house of their fathers, and all of them by their names were separated, and sat down in the first day of the tenth month to examine the matter. And they made an end with all the men that had taken strange wives by the first day of the month. Hmm. Interesting. They're separating. They're having to get rid of these strange wives. Is it transgression against God? It was going to cause the fierce wrath of God to come down upon Israel. It's a very serious sin. It's not just something, oh, well, Moses did, Moses did, so it must be okay. You see, they always try to look for the exception to overthrow the rule. Here's a good example of this. In Genesis 19, at the end of Genesis 19, Lot is committing incest with his two daughters. Okay? Now, incest is very clearly condemned in Leviticus chapter 18, 18 verses uh, 7 to 17, I believe it is, 7 to 17. It's very clearly condemned. But when Lot was doing it, how come God never punished him or condemned it on the spot? Because the exception doesn't overthrow the rule. Okay? The Bible records the sins of men, but it does not condone them. Okay? Lot was wrong to commit incest, and we know that because uh, Leviticus 18 verses uh, 7 to 17 condemns incest. So, the exception doesn't overthrow the rule. That's, that's the main error that a lot of the pro interracial professing Christians get themselves into. Next scripture, uh, another good scripture condemning interracial marriage. Uh, Nehemiah chapter 13 verses 23 to 27. In those days also saw I Jews that had married wives, wives of Ashdod, of Ammon, and of Moab. And their children spake in half in the speech of Ashdod, and could not speak in the Jews' language, but according to the language of each people. And I contended with them, and cursed them, and smote certain of them, and plucked off their hair, and made them swear by God, saying, You shall not give your daughters Give, you shall not give your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons, or for yourselves. Did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? Yet among many nations was there no king like him, who was beloved of his God, and God made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, did, even did outlandish women cause him to sin. Shall we then hearken unto you to do all this great evil, to transgress against our God in marrying strange wives? Very, very interesting. Notice in verse 23 and 24, the Jews are marrying wives of Ashdod, Ammon, and Moab, and then it messes up their children's language. They speak half the language of Ashdod, half the language of, of, uh, of uh, the Jewish language. So if it was all about religion, um, how does that change your language? How, how does being born in a certain religion mess up your speech? Because it was an interracial marriage. Okay, It was messing up the health and the communication skills of their children. Interracial marriage is a very serious sin. And then notice verse 27. Great evil transgress 
It's a transgression. It's a great evil against God. Interracial marriage is a very, very wicked sin in the eyes of God. So don't be deceived by Stephen Anderson's lies about, oh, number 12 uh, supports interracial marriage. Uh, Moses was a w interracial marriage in number 12, and God never condemned it. Yeah, because the exception does not overthrow the rule. But they're trying to look for the exception to overthrow the rule to justify their sin. Don't be deceived by Anderson. He was lying to you. He is deceiving his people. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.